oh, I have to get out of bed at six o'clock. No, you get to get out of bed at six o'clock. Do you know why? Because 150,000 people will die today. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to shift your words just a little teeny tiny bit. I'm talking like the smallest shift in the world and how that shift can completely change the way that you see and view the world, but then also the way that you feel about the things that you do as well. And before I dive into it and, and tell you what the actual word is, because why would I want to give it to you right away? Let me go ahead and lay the groundwork and the foundation so you realize why this is so important. So I'm going to give you an example of how simple, just a simple change of words can really change the way that you see things, the way that you act, the way that you feel, and the way that you view everything around you as well. And um, I'm going to give you this this example, you know, words are so, 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 so powerful. They can literally change the state that you are in. And so right now you might just be in a normal chill state, nothing really crazy. But just think if someone comes up to you and they say, Hey, I love you. How would that make you feel by just someone saying that? Now, what if someone comes up to you and says, Hey, you look really amazing today. How would that make you feel? How would it make you feel if they say, Hey, your shirt looks really great with your eyes. How would that make you feel? What if they come up to you and you say, man, you look so pretty today. You look so handsome today. How would that make you feel? Think about that for a second. What if they come up to you and say, hey, I love your haircut. I love the way that you did your hair today. How does that make you feel? Simply just by the words that someone's using when they come up to you. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. Words can make you feel amazing, can't they? If they're said to you the right way. Now let's flip it on its head. What if someone comes up and says, I hate you. And they say it in a really loud screaming way. I hate you. I hate everything about you. You treat people like trash. I've never respected you. You've never respected me. You know, you've, you'll, you'll never be good enough. Someone comes up to you and says those types of things. How would that make you feel? Now you could brush it off and be like, oh, whatever, right? But how'd that actually make you feel? Think about that for a second. Because the words that you use and the words that other people use around you, if you're not careful, can really change the state that you're in. They can make you feel amazing or they can make you feel absolutely terrible. So words are extremely, extremely powerful. And you have to think about this and really understand how powerful words actually are. You know, somebody could come up to you and they could say a derogatory word based off of what you look like, what sex you are, what gender, what you identify with, what nationality you are, whatever it is. They could say a derogatory word. How could that, that word could literally, you'd be having an amazing day Someone could cut you off or you could accidentally cut someone off and they come in, they flip you the bird and then they call you something that's extremely derogatory and it could change the state of your day just by a couple simple words. Isn't that true? So words are extremely powerful. Just think about how much those words can completely change your state. Now, the question I have for you around this is how much do you pay attention to the words that you use every single day? How much do you pay attention to them? See, when I talk to somebody, and I learned this from being a coach for years and years and years and years, is to listen to somebody, but to really, really intently listen to every single word that they use. And the reason why is because especially when someone's on a stream of conscious and they're just speaking, what happens is they use words and phrases that they're not necessarily paying attention to, but it's they'll give you little seeds. They'll drop little hints of what's actually going on in their mind. Then you can see how they view the world or how that's holding them back. And so I always say that if you listen intently enough, it's kind of like getting a little bit of a window into someone's subconscious. And so the thing that I want you to talk, the flip that I want you to think of is this. I want you to think of the things that you get to do. Right? Think of the things that you get to do, right? Just think of one thing that you get to do. What is that thing? Have it in your mind real quick. And I want you to really think about that. Think about that thing. What is something that you get to do? What is it? And when you think about that thing that you get to do, how does that make you feel when you think about that thing that you get to do? How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel amazing? Does it make you feel loved? Does it make you feel happy? 
Does it make you feel grateful? How does it make you feel to think of that thing that you get to do? How do you feel doing that thing? That thing that you get to do? How do you feel when you get to do it? Right? How do you feel right now just thinking about that thing that you get to do? Think of another thing. Think of things that you get to do. Just really try hard with me here. What are some things that you get to do? How do you feel right now in this moment thinking about those? How do you feel when you get to do those things? Okay, now let me ask you this question. What's something that you have to do? What is something that you have to do? Think of that. Think of one thing. Just bring it up into your mind. What is that one thing that you have to do? What is it? You know, and when, you've, when you're doing that thing that you have to do, how do you feel when you're doing that thing that you have to do? How do you feel when you, when you do that thing you have to do? Maybe not excited, pissed off, wishing you were doing something else, right? How do you feel thinking about those things that you have to do? Oh man, later on I have to do this. What, how do you feel just thinking about, not even actually doing it right now, but how do you feel thinking about the thing that you have to do later on today? How do you feel? Now, let me tell you something. Notice, I use two different words, get to do and have to do. Get and have to do. And all too often, I hear people say, I have to do this. And I can tell by the tone of their voice that they're not excited about it. And here's the thing, I don't think that anybody should do anything in this world that they don't love. Now, do people do stuff they don't love? Absolutely. But here's the thing, if you craft your life around enough things and really start to think about the things that you're doing, if you start to craft it around what you love to do, then you get to do things. Now, I understand some of you guys are listening to me and you're like, Rob, but I have to do these things. I have to pay the bills. Of course, I'm not talking about not doing those things. What I'm going to talk with you right now is about flipping the way that you view the things that you have to do. So let me give you an example. Lots of people say, oh, later on today, I have to work out. Okay, is it that you have to work out or is it that you get to work out? Imagine if you just switched the way that you said it. So let me explain and, and let me go deeper into it. I have to work out today. Is a phrase of like, I don't wanna freaking work out today, but I'm gonna have to push myself to do it. Right, and just think about the mentality of having to do that, having to work out versus I get to work out today. And let me explain why I say that. Think about how many people, think about how many people can't work out today because maybe they're fully paralyzed. They're quadriplegic. They can't work out at all. They can't go in and do bicep curls. They can't go run on a treadmill. They can't go play basketball. For them, if they got to work out, their phrase that they would say to themselves is, I get to work out today. Now think about how the shift happens in your brain of I have to work out versus I get to work out. There's a shift, isn't it? And it's only one word difference. You flip have to get. So you should never have to do something, but you should always get to do something. I have to work out today. Think about all the people that would love to be able to be in your shoes to do the workout that you quote unquote have to do. No, you get to work out today. You get to walk into the gym because there's so many people that would love to walk into that gym, that would love to walk on the treadmill. They would love to be able to hold on to a basketball and throw it or be able to do some bicep curls, but they can't. So you get to work out. Now you have to work out. Oh, I have to get out of bed at six o'clock. No, you get to get out of bed at six o'clock. Do you know why? Because 150,000 people will die today. That's the statistic. 150,000 people die every single day. You get to get out of bed every single morning. Not you have to get out of bed every single morning. Think about how the, the thought of just, I have to get up versus I get to get up can change your perception of the entire day. If someone can cut you off and say a few words to you and that can ruin the state that you're in for the entire day, don't you think the words that you say to yourself in the moments when it's just you actually cut even deeper into your subconscious than that person that you don't know? Of course. You don't have to get out of bed. You get to get out of bed. You were blessed enough to be able to get out of bed today. Simple shift, right? I have to go to work. You have to go to work. Even if you hate your job, you get to go to work. 
because there's so many people that are unemployed right now. 35 million, 30 million people I think are unemployed right now. They would love to be able to take a job that you're going to, that you quote unquote have to go to. No, you don't have to go to that job. You could stay home. Now you wouldn't be able to pay your bills, but you don't have to do anything. No, no, no. You get to go to that job. Ugh, I have to go grocery shopping today. Really? You have to or you get to? You get to go to the grocery store and be able to buy food? Do you mean people aren't going to eat today? It's not that you have to do it. You get to go to the grocery store. You get to be able to afford a meal for you and your family. Think about how this, it's a small shift, but think about how this could change the way that you start to view the world. Not I have to do this thing, I get to do this thing. Think about how that, that little shift could completely change the way that you see the world around you, right? I have to fill up my gas. Ugh. Or you get to fill up your gas. Do you mean people would love to have your car? Do you mean people would love to not have to ride a bike or walk or take the bus anymore? No, you get to fill up your car. I have to feed my children. No, 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 you get to feed your children. Do you mean people have lost children in their lives? You get to feed them. You don't have to do anything in this world. You could literally stay in bed all day, every day if you wanted to. Now, let's be real. You lose your job, you lose your children, you lose your house, you lose your bed, and you'd be homeless. And you could then you could stay outside and you could lay on the bed or on the ground forever if you wanted to. That's your choice. Life is full of choices. You can make whatever choice you want. But it's never that you have to do something. It's that you get to do something. There are so many people that would trade places with you like that if they could. Don't ever tell me or tell someone else or even tell yourself more than anyone else. Don't ever tell yourself that you have to do something. No, with every single choice that you make, every single moment in your life, you are making the choice to do what you're doing. Don't blame anybody else. You get to do these things, so that's the beautiful thing. You get to go to this job, even if you hate your job with a passion. I get it, I have hated my jobs with a passion before as well. But hey, it's at least feeding you for now, right? You don't have to stay there forever. Once again, you don't have to stay there. You can leave if you want to. It's up to you, that's your choice. Everything in this world is a choice. That's the beautiful thing about it. But you don't have to go there, you get to go there. And guess what? If you decide to leave one day, you leave one day. But you've made the decision to go there. Nobody else has. And this is, the, this is really the shift where you start to realize when you stop saying, I have to do things, you realize that nobody is in control of you. The only one that's in control of you is you. And you at this point in time have to look at your life and go, I've made all the decisions to get me to where I am. I can't blame it on the president. I can't blame it on the government. I can't blame it on my parents. I can't blame it on my past. I can't blame it on my spouse that did X, Y, Z. I can't blame it on this person or the car crash or that accident or this person. No, once you take full 100% ownership of every single action that happens in your life and everything that you do, that's when most people think that's scary to think that I, it's all on my shoulders. No, that's so empowering because it shows you that from this moment on, you're in control of every single act. Actually, you've always been in control of every single action, but now I know every single action is an action that I have chosen to take. Not that I have to take, but I have chosen to take it. Even if it's not the one that I want at this moment, I have chosen to take it and I get to take it. Because guess what? As I said, you know, there's a lot of people that wish that they could work out. It's not that you have to work out. There's a lot of people that wish that they were still alive, but they died. There's a lot of people that have to go to, or that don't have a job. You get to go to work. There's a lot of people that aren't able to feed their family. You get to be able to feed your family. There's a lot of people that aren't able to take a car to go fill up because they don't have one. You have a car. There's a lot of people that aren't able to feed their children. You get to feed your children. So take that switch. And next time you notice yourself saying, I have to do this, become very self-aware. Take yourself outside of yourself and look at your current circumstance and say, no, no, no. I have to take full ownership of everything in my life. And I have to say, I get to do this. 
What's beautiful about this is if you start saying, I get to do things, your perception of them flip and you start to do things with more happiness, with more joy, with more peace. Once again, when I said just a few minutes ago, think of all the things that you get to do and how that makes you feel. Think about how you felt when I said that. Oh, I get to see my children. I get to drop them off. I get to be a parent. I get to be a spouse. I get to be a mentor, whatever it is that you get to do. And then when I said, think of things that you have to do, you're like, oh, oh my God, there's so many things I have to do that I just don't want to do, right? There's so many things, but think about if you switched them, if everything that you felt that you had to do, imagine if you could feel better about all those things by just flipping the words that you use. Because once again, as I started this episode, that's why I had to start this episode talking about how powerful words are. The words that you use are so powerful. Make sure that you're using the words that are empowering to you and not disempowering because you never have to do anything, but you get to do everything that you're doing. And I guarantee you that there's so many people in this world that would trade places for you in an instant if they had the opportunity to. So go in with the attitude of I get to do things and see how much that changes your perception of your life, the things that you do and the world around you as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you believe that the world is going to shit, you will see all of the ways that the world is going to shit.